I don't. Th- I don't think there's ever such a thing as too little, too late. I mean, you know, people say that, but what what other option is there? I mean, there's always the opportunity to engage. Um, I think. I think that if we looked at the way that the that the U.S. managed its role in the past couple of weeks, I mean, arguably, I think you know, one can say it's been actually really pretty effective. Uh, you know, the uh, despite the fact that people were looking to to point to differences between you know uh, between the American and the Israeli approach to that. I mean, the Prime Minister and the President spoke multiple times. When the President finally did go, I think, in the fourth call and talked for you know the move towards a de-escalation within 24 hours, we actually had some sort of uh, you know cessation of hostilities. Um, so I mean, I think there you know there is a willingness to cooperate. There are other issues on the table as well. I mean, this this could be some sort of uh, pre-game show for a face-off over the Iranian issue, where you know Israeli and and uh, American. Uh, Objectives are in sync, but maybe the way to get there is not. Um, but I mean, I do think that there is a willingness there. I think as long as you know, as, with, with uh, you know, if you've seen it out there. You know, the secretary has been received by parties on both sides. He's been very active. There's a uh, they've tapped finally tapped an ambassador to Israel. They're talking about reopening the consulate general in Jerusalem again. Um, he met with leaders on both sides. He's traveling through the region. He'll be also in Jordan and in, uh, and in Egypt. So I mean, I, th- I think it's a little early and premature to say it was a little too late. We'll have to see where this goes, though. Right, okay, as we continue to see then uh, diplomacy, fresh diplomacy between the United States then and Israel under the Biden administration, what does it mean for uh, Israeli domestic politics? Because we know that neither side has been able to form uh, a stable government after several elections. Is this going to move the needle to, towards either side of the political spectrum in Israel? You know, I'd have to say it's unlikely that it's actually going to have a direct impact on that process. I mean, as you say, Israel has gone to the polls four times in the past two years. Um, I think voters pretty much decided what they wanted. Um, you know, the dividing line seems to be in or not they, you know, to return as prime minister. That's almost been the only issue that's sucked up all the oxygen in the room. Um, and, and people more or less know where they stand on that, I would think. I mean, it's it, it, the only thing that makes it a little bit unpredictable is the fact that, that you know, the, poll, the polling show that the deadlock continues. If there were to be a fifth ballot, we'd probably end up in the same situation. But because the margins are so slim, moving the needle a little bit one way or the other, you know, could could uh, could conceivably have some you know some sort of impact. Um, but you know, the timetable is very crowded now. Uh, the current holder of the mandate to form a government, Yair Lapid, the leader of the opposition as until Tuesday. Uh, there are rumors that he may actually have something in hand. It's unclear that he does. Um, the other options after that, if he fails, are, are a 21-day period in which any sitting member of Knesset can try and form a 61-person majority. Um, there's even been talk of, I don't know that it would pass, but he's talking of this talk of submitting a bill to actually dissolve the parliament immediately to skip that stage altogether, which would lead to a fifth ballot. So I don't, and it's like, you know, we, we could know something very quickly and be surprised by it, but the way things stand right now, you know, I think we're no far from out of the woods in terms of uh, you know, creating some sort of stability here.